Welcome back everyone. When starting to learn a new API, sometimes the hardest part is getting your project set up. Well, today is not that day. We will be covering how to set up your project and making your first SDS2.NET API calls. So let's get into this. To get started, we'll need to open up Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, whichever one you prefer. Then we'll need to create a new project. You can choose any project template from .NET Framework or .NET Core, except for any web technologies or you, Windows Universal Platform. We'll go ahead and we'll pick WPF. And we'll say next. We we'll want to rename our application to Hello World. And we can keep the default location and we'll say create. Once our project is loaded, we will need to add references to all the SDS2 API DLLs. So we'll say references, add reference, browse, then we will need to go to our C drive, program files, SDS2, bin, and then we'll need to select several DLLs here. So if we can see, we can see a bunch of design data SDS2. Want the database, detail, exceptions, linker, model, primitives, Python, setup, and win forms. So you go ahead and add. Now that we have our dependencies added, we'll need to go to the main entry point of our application. If you're in a console app, that would be where your main method is. In our WPF app, it can just be our main window.xaml.cs first thing that we want to do is add a using to design data sds2 from here the very first line of code that we need to write for our application is to allow the sds2 api to dynamically load in the required assemblies at runtime to facilitate this we need to make a call out to the linker so we'll say private bool was linked equals linker dot link and we have to get the major version of SDS2 so 2021 and then so as soon as our application loads it will make a call to linker and grab those assemblies if we want to make sure that SDS2 is loaded we can always say if was linked and we know that any code that we execute in this next section was guaranteed to have loaded the SDS2 API. And then to finish off our hello world example, we want to say string version is equal to design data dot SDS2 dot database dot version dot program version dot two string. The reason why we fully qualified this is if you have a using system and you're using statements of your class, the compiler won't know the difference between system.version and the SDS2 database version. You can then just do a console.writeline version. All right, now before we can actually run our application, we need to do one last thing. We need to change our compile target to be 64-bit. So up here it says any CPU. We just need to drop that down, go to configuration manager. And we'll say any CPU, drop that down to say new x64. Say okay. And we'll close. And we'll see we now have x64 at the top. And we'll say start. So the very first time that you run the SDS2 API, it usually takes a minute uh, to get up and running. All I find that all subsequent uh, runs are considerably faster. So we can see we can mouse over our version here and it's 8.001, so that's perfect. Before we go, I'd like to mention that the current .NET API only works with SDS2 in a closed or HIPAA state, meaning there's no interactivity. You can't be in your model selecting objects and me then using your .NET API to do operations on them. I would love to thank you again for tuning in and being here with us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.